Student clients, welcome back to another edition of the NMS eLearning Systems YouTube channel, brought to you by the DLA Guru. Good morning, good morning, good morning. The world of YouTube. The DLA Guru is back in the building. Back in the building. I've been looking forward to... Um, to having the, this live stream this morning. Uh, this is our, our bi-monthly uh, live stream event. As you guys know, uh, the first 20 minutes or so, I have, uh, I'm have i opening it up for a quick presentation for the general public uh, for you guys to have a little bit of an insight on uh, my world as it relates to the DLA and GovCon uh, and some of the, um, the, I guess, tools or opportunities uh, or just... Uh, thoughts that I think would be uh, beneficial to you in your journey. That'll be in, in uh, some of these opening slides for the general public. And then from there, we'll switch to a members only forum where we have about a two hour um, classroom, virtual classroom setting where you guys will be able to connect with me at the Brigadier General level. So you'll need to make sure that you have a subscription uh, to my paid members only uh, channel at the Brigadier General level in order to talk with me one-on-one -on -one, uh, via StreamYard. And um, that will be for two hours where you guys will be able to video and mic up and, vi well, I should say video up and mic up and be able to talk with me one-on-one -on -one and ask questions, any and everything related to GovCon, DLA contracting, uh, DLA solicitations that you guys may be going after, national stock numbers that you may be uh, evaluating or just strategies or just, you know, how how would I potentially go after an opportunity? And then you'll be able to share that um, in the um, in a forum. Um, and I always like to say a safe place. But anyway, so it looks like we got five concurrent viewers in the building. Thank you. Thank you for joining me this morning. I'm looking forward to finding out who you guys are. Um, I always like to see a little activity in the chat. Just in the morning, if you can send me a quick little shout out, let me know that you're in the building. Let me know who you are, especially for my Brigadier General members. Um, I always like to have at least three of you guys in the building before I switch over to the members only content. It makes it just a quorum of folks that I'll have in the members only session that just makes it more beneficial for all involved. So if I can get at least three Br Brigadier General members um, in the building, that would be fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. It looks like I'm getting a little bit of interesting feedback on my uh, my video production here. And I am a stickler for perfection. And I want to let me make a quick little change to my. Mm, I think I can I can clean it up a little bit, make it a little bit better. How's that? All right. Clean the little fade up. OK, good. Looks good. I like it. Hopefully you guys like it as well. But yeah, if you can send me um, a fire emoji would be fantastic in the chat just to let you let me know that you're in the building as well. And you're looking forward to seeing what I'm cooking because I put together a pretty cool presentation that I think that you guys will definitely enjoy and be able to get a little information, uh, 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 will enhance your, your experience or your journey, your educational journey as it relates to GovCon. And uh, let's see here. We got uh, Addy. Hey, what's up, Addy? Addy's in the building, and he is a um, brigadier. No, Addy is a no, no. I remember speaking with Addy. No, she, she, Addy. Hi, Addy. She, she is a brigadier general level. So fantastic for joining us in the, in the, uh, in the chat there, Addy. Good morning to you. And it looks like we also have uh, James. Looks like James is in the building too. Good morning, James. I see you in the building. Fantastic. Thanks for the heart emojis there. Cool. So we got a little activity in the chat and uh, we got some. Do we have any likes coming in there? Any likes? I can't really tell on my screen here, but if if you guys can shoot me a like as well, that helps to kind of get the algorithm going and whatnot. Thumbnail as well as the title. We're going to be talking a little bit about um, Sam.gov versus Dibs. Uh, there's a lot of there, there's a there's a growing um uh, i guess movement that that i've recognized over the past year as it relates to Gov govcon i was actually at a networking event this uh this week uh, in dallas and uh there were a couple of people in the building that were talking about government contracting and it's amazing i go to a lot of networking events and i never really hear people as much as i've been hearing re in recent in recent uh times talking about govcon and um i think it's fantastic and I think it's great because I've been in this 
in this realm uh, for 20 years. And it, it's just, you know, I, I've always thought that government contracting, I never really understood why government contracting hasn't been just kind of a household name, but you know what, better, better late than never. And so for those of you who are tuning into my content, tune, subscribe to my channel, kudos to you because you're in the right place at the right time for a revolution that is sure to, 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 uh, to take form and to, uh, and to grow. It's only going to grow. And the more information that you guys have about getting involved with government contracting, figuring out some of the hacks and things like that, getting the training, getting the know-how from seasoned uh, government, government vendors is only going to benefit your company um, in, in the future. So fantastic and kudos to you for, for joining in and wanting to be a part of this new revolution. And, you know, I always attune GovCon as a, as a brand new um, opportunity, uh, such as when Airbnb hit the hit, hit the airways, as well as the Turos hit the airways, Bitcoin hit the airways. I kind of look at GovCon as that, but of course, it's been around much longer than those other uh, other opportunities, but uh, it's just, you know, the world's best kept secret. And so for those of you who get the knowledge, kudos to you. But anyway, as you can see on screen, let me go ahead and minimize this a little bit so I can um, show you the full slide. So for those of you who are new to my content, new to my channel, new to me, first time ch chiming in, because I'm getting, I, you know, I see in the algorithm, in the, um, not algorithm, in the analytics for for YouTube, there's a lot of new folks taking a look at what the DLA guru is cooking. But uh, welcome to my channel. If you guys are new, uh, it looks like we have eight concurrent viewers. Uh, my name is Kiwi Hendricks. I'm the U.S. government sales manager uh, with the National Material Supply Company. Uh, we have been servicing the U.S. government by way of the U.S. military and the DLA uh, for the past 20 years. And um, I've I've uh, coined the name the DLA Guru because of my background, and my experience in doing government contracting, and I think I'm in the perfect position to add some value to your DLA journey. Uh, so that's what I've been, uh, I guess, getting becoming known as the DLA Guru. As um, I always kind of talk a little bit about uh, my channel, you know, I'm I'm a YouTube content creator, so. I have to ask you, if you're new to my content and you haven't hit the subscribe button, please hit the subscribe button because in order to interact with the chat this morning, if you have any questions or any, you just want to throw something at me, you'll have to be a subscriber to the channel. Uh, and that doesn't cost you anything just to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the share button. I always say, please, you know, promote, help promote what I'm trying to, trying to get out there because I think it can really change a lot of people's lives and open your eyes up to tremendous opportunities as it relates to doing business with the U.S. federal government. And again, my presentation today has everything to do with SAM.gov versus DIBS. All right. So we're going to dive in. And I'm going to give you a little bit of my background working on both of those platforms that may give you a little insight on how you can approach uh, being a professional government contractor and dibbling and dabbling and navigating between the two platforms. Uh, but before getting into that, you know, um, I've been talking a lot this year about my fiscal 2024 goals, and that is to support 100 new businesses with DLA contracts. And what I mean by that is support you guys in that provide you with the necessary training, the tools, the know-how, the methodology, my approach that has, has brought success to our company in being successful in, in contracting with the DLA, because believe you me, my journey has been tumultuous in that I've skipped my knee a lot. And so in the 20 years, I've learned what not to do. And my goal is to help 100 new businesses be able to get the hacks, get the cliff notes so that you don't uh, make the same mistakes that I have made, or our, or should I say our company has made in the past 20 years. And that'll just give you just the um, an edge, an edge on being more successful, hopefully more successful than our company uh, as it relates to finding opportunities that align with your business model uh, with what you guys know uh, and what you can pr uh, what you can produce uh, in order to support the world's largest customer, the Defense Logistics Agency. So, I'm looking for 100 new businesses to join the lineup. Um, I've talked a lot. Uh, well, I guess a couple of my other live streams. I now have a LinkedIn group uh, page by invite only uh, that you can uh, request to join. I believe there should be a link up to the uh, the LinkedIn uh, group in the um, in the description of this video. And if it's not in there, I'll make sure I put it in there at the end of this video so you guys can have access to the LinkedIn. And by all means, if it's not there, because I can't remember if I put it in the description or not, if it's not there, 
you can see me on screen. Let me make this a little larger for you so you guys can see my email address there. Uh, it's fed.contracting at nmsupply.com. As you can see on screen, shoot me an email and say, hey, I can't find your LinkedIn group uh, link. Uh, can you please send it over to me? And I'll be sure to send the link over to you. Now, keep in mind, I, am, I don't allow any and everybody into the LinkedIn group. Uh, what I like to do is just kind of get a snapshot of you know, your profile on LinkedIn, take a look at your accolades, your background, because I want to make sure that everyone that's part of our LinkedIn group are professionals that have had a history of being in industry, either by way of distribution or manufacturing or some type of, you know, value that you can bring to other folks within the LinkedIn group, because I like that to be a platform where we can all network and uh, meet and greet and maybe forge relationships, partnerships to go after big time DLA contracts. And I'm not sure if you guys have noticed that in my community uh, forum, and it's only for members only at any subscription level, um, I basically, I, I would say almost daily, I post nuggets, whether it be news articles that I run across or uh, DLA webinars or any type of uh, webinars outside of the DLA. It just may be other, eight, other vendors that I think may add value uh, I know it's adding value to our company, so I think it may add value to you guys. So you can find information about uh, just anything happening GovCon related in the community chat and uh, or I should say the community forum. And you can find that on the home page of this YouTube channel. There is a community button that when you click on that, of course, in order to gain access to the members only content, you'll have to upgrade and subscribe to uh, to me at, a, at at any membership level. Uh, you can be at the in, uh, enlisted or you know, commander or brigadier general. It doesn't matter, but you can have access to some of some of those nuggets as well. So I invite you uh, to at, at least uh, you know support my channel by by joining that, and I'll make sure I make it worth your while to provide you with a different uh, additional information along your your GovCon journey. But with that said. Of those 100 new businesses, I think right now, last time I checked, we got maybe, I think it's four companies, four or five now, that um, I've kind of taken a look at and I'm pulling them underneath the fold um, and making sure that I'm interacting and, and, and providing even more value to those companies to help nurture and to, to coach those companies on. And a lot of times, you know, I really appreciate those companies that take on the challenge and they invest in yourself. By, by signing up for some of my master classes that were designed specifically to assist you with getting involved with the DLA from a pre-award perspective, post-award, as well as EJCP certification. Um, I also have, and, and I'll talk about this at the end of this, but I also am doing some more, uh, more training, like live workshops and things of that nature that are coming down the pipe. So that's all part of my 100 new business goals this year just to personally touch 100 new businesses and to, to assist you guys along your DLA journey. Okay, so let's move on. Sam.gov versus Dibs. Which platform is best for beginners? And, you know, maybe I shouldn't say just beginners. I, I think it's just e this, even if you're, uh, uh, you know, not even necessarily new to GovCon, but there's this, there's this little bit of a contention as it relates to services versus products right and i get a lot of folks reaching out to me asking a little bit about sam.gov what my experience is does the dla you know sell or buy i, I should say does the dla buy via sam.gov and the answer is yes they do and the dla does do contracting services through sam.gov a lot of times you guys uh, especially on my community forum tab you'll see some of the news articles that i post that you know because i follow the DLA religiously. I'm always trying to figure out what's new and great uh, going on with the DLA. And there are some multi-million dollar contract awards for small businesses as well as large businesses that provide uh, very unique services to the DLA. Um, you know, so there are clothing manufacturers. I think there was one company in particular uh, that received like a 90 plus million dollar contract over the next five years to make, uh, you know, uh, 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 life preserver uh, type of uh, wear for uh, for our warfighters. And so there are just a, a, a multitude of opportunities that you can find on SAM.gov when it comes to services. Now, can't, keep in mind, you know, services and products uh, kind of go hand in hand on SAM.gov as it relates to the DLA, but it's more from a service base. You know, I don't have all the details of those contract um, awards or the solicitations that the DLA 
uh, pulse on sam.gov but a lot of the activity is definitely heavily service related as it relates to those multi-million dollar contracts so talk a little bit more about sam let me let me change my screen to show you um for those of you that may not know what sam.gov is of course there's plenty of content on youtube as it relates to getting involved with sam.gov there are a lot of content creators that have really large channels that talk extensively about sam.gov as you guys know i don't really go into detail about sam because i'm more on the product side of it but sam.gov for those of you who may be new to it is this is the website here literally sam.gov uh, you can log on to it. It looks like this when you get to the uh, to the interface. And uh, this is where every government contractor has to begin their journey. So those of you who have the UEIs, which is a unique uh, entity uh, ID, uh, you'll get that when you register through SUSTAM.gov. Every federal contractor must have a UEI. So you, you go here to get started. And here's this big green button here. You get started. Uh, along that journey, they're going to ask for everything that you can think of uh, from bone marrow and DNA and everything else in order to get your UEI set up. Uh, from my understanding, it's a very painful process uh, for a lot of vendors that uh, are partake in get, uh, being involved with government contracting. But hey, if you're running into roadblocks, don't give up. Um, there's plenty of resources out there that can assist you along your journey to, to at least get your UEI. Uh, there are a bunch of contracting agencies out there. There's the Apex Accelerator, uh, where you can get free information or free assistance. Now, I will say different Apex Accelerator um, organizations are better than others. You know, um, you know, I actually had a conversation with one of the Apex uh, um, uh, focal points here in Dallas uh, uh, this week. And it was not, that was my very first time calling them. Uh, we were having an issue with our SAM uh, registration being that uh, our hub zone status is not being reflected on our SAM.gov profile. However, it is on our small business dynamic search database profile, you know, so I really didn't know exactly why the SBA hasn't loaded our hub zone status on SAM uh, underneath our UEI. So I reached out to uh, Sam, they didn't have any clue of how to do it. They threw it back to the SBA. The SBA said, no, that's nothing. That's that's a Sam issue. Then they said, hey, call your Apex folks. They can probably help. And that's what I did. I went in and found my my local Apex rep. And this guy was really difficult to talk to, you know, uh, very, very interesting. And I almost kind of thought to myself, like, who, okay, who's the customer here? And so, you know, if you guys are experiencing some of the, some of that, um, um, what I like to say negativity as it relates to working with Apex Accelerators, you know, there are always other resources outside of those free resources where you may have to pay a consultant to assist you because anything free is not necessarily good. <laughs> so just keep that in mind as you you guys are moving down the path. A lot of folks try to find, you know, quick ways and, and easy ways of getting things done. And that's not always the best way. You know, so but luckily I was able to figure out what uh, figure out the answer to my question. And I kind of did my own research and realized that um, I had to work with another uh, division with, within the SBA to assist me with that. But anyway, neither here nor there. So this is Sam.gov. Great website. Uh, they talk a lot about services and Sam, my experience with Sam. And here, let me go back to my presentation real quick, because I'm I put a couple of bullet points here. You know, SAM.gov can be extremely intimidating, you know, and it's not for the faint of heart. And what I mean by that is, you know, you have a lot of these what's called RFPs, all right, requests for proposal. And these RFPs, uh, they come in the form of solicitations on SAM.gov. And I'm not going to go through this training today is not to dive into it like an actual SAM solicitation, but it's more or less to give you my perspective as it relates to SAM and the type of um, activity that is going to, or, or the type of um, skill set that you'll need in order to be successful in the SAM world from a service, from a federal contracting service perspective. Again, it could be really intimidating because you're getting these RFPs that have somewhat, you know, upwards of 80 plus pages in these RFPs where they're asking for, you know, the federal government. And you can, you know, you're reading each page and they're, they're using these clauses, especially if you're new to this, that you don't really understand the terminologies and it can just be overwhelming. And for those of you that can push through it, because believe you me, in my day, I have gone through a lot of RFPs to the point where I'm putting together my price proposal, I'm putting together my technical proposal, I'm putting together my past performance and who my key stakeholders are. And we present, 
you know, we, we put hours of information, hours of time in pulling together our responses to these RFPs. And, you know, we're having 100 pages worth of information that we're presenting back to the federal government, different agencies, you know, we're not talking DLA now, we're talking just different agencies. And uh, for example, the Department of State, you know, that was one agency that I spent a lot of time going after. And so you'll present this to the, you know, to your federal agency and, you know, you, you hope for the best and then you find out you don't win the contract and not necessarily on price because there's a lot of them where we win on price, you know, our price is more, the, we were the low, lowest price proposal, but then they'll hit you on the technicality. They'll hit you on the technical proposal. And the technical proposal is very subjective because it's very difficult. You know, price is very finite. You know, this is, it. this is my price. This is all of my competitors' prices. Okay, we got the lowest price. Now the technical proposal comes in and they say, well, you were high risk. You know, they have low, medium, high risk, you know? And so that's that gray area where the government says, hey, we're going to basically do business with who we feel is better for the government, you know? And so it, it, when you get into a lot of those types of situations where you don't have points of contact within those agencies or the agencies don't really know who you are and know who your team is, you can really spend a lot of time chasing your tail when it comes to service-based contracts uh, with SAM.gov. I'm just going to flat out tell you guys, I mean, we've won a handful of contracts through the SAM.gov uh, you know, uh, services aspect. And I think back in the day it was called uh, Fed Biz Op, you know. So, but anyway, it, it's just really subjective when you go through that. And there's a lot of politicking that has to go in. And a lot of companies can take that challenge on because they're able to partner with bigger companies who already have points of contact. And again, that past performance as it relates to it, because keep in mind, the government does not like risk. Anything that makes them feel like something's not going to go right, because if they award a contract to you and you fail, it's really not going to affect you. It's going to affect the contracting officer. It's going to be a negative for them, and they don't want to have anything that keeps them up at night. So SAM.gov and the services aspect, great opportunities there. And if you're, if you, if you're able to put together great pricing, you have great technical proposal, and you have great past performance, you know, you can win. You can make a lot of money with SAM.gov. But if you always notice when you do the research and you find out the companies that are winning, it's the same handful of companies that are winning over and over and over again. And so you almost kind of think, is this rigged? And so, you know, that's kind of my attitude as it relates to SAM.gov. You just really got to know what you're doing. Uh, I recommend for those of you who are in the services side, whether whatever it may be, you know, go after some of the low hanging fruit, of course, you know, don't necessarily go after the $50 million contracts, you know, go for, you know, the, you know, you know, the six figure type contracts initially where the risk uh, is not as high to the government to award it to new businesses into this uh, arena. And then you begin to kind of, you know, build upon that. Right. So that's my perspective on Sam.gov. Dibs now, dibs, 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 ah, dibs, you know, the DLA and dibs. And let me go back over here and show you guys this. Let me, um, let's see, I think you can zoom in here. But so dibs, which stands for the defense, uh, the, the DLA is internet bit board system. So that's what dibs stands for. When you log into dibs, you're going to see this page here. You're going to click the OK button. And once you go into it, well, it says, um, I think you got to click here again sometimes when you, when you're just sitting there waiting in limbo, uh, you get timed out because the U.S. military doesn't like anyone trying to do any cyber cyber hacking on their website. So they will time you out. So you have to just refresh and get a new uh, refresher IP there. Uh, let me uh, take a look at some of the chat real quick because I'm just rocking and rolling here. All right. Man, I got a lot of chat information this morning. That's great. So we got Dammy. Good morning. Good morning to you too, Dammy. All right. Fantastic. Let me see, we got uh, Artemis. Have you earned any new contracts this year? Yes, I've earned some new contracts this year, for sure. Uh, uh, we actually won a contract, um, I believe, this week on Monday. We got a, a small contract, but all right. And we got uh, Jasmine that's out there. Thanks for the fire emoji there uh, and the hearts, Jasmine. Appreciate it. Glad that you're loving the content. Uh, let's see, we have, do you have any business with DLA TLS? No, I do not have any business with DLA TLS. Um, no, I do not. Not at this time. I'm not sure who S, uh, Southeast Texas Moving Services is. Um, let's see here. And, you know, TLS, or actually, TLS, that doesn't ring a bell. 
Uh, Southeast Texas Moving Services. If you can tell me what the acronym for TLS is, that will help me too to know what that means because that didn't. I just that rolled off my tongue because I'm not familiar with TLS. So let me know what that TLS the acronym stands for, and I can make give you a better answer. Um, let's see here. We got Brenna Via. Okay, is an approved source the only source to get products from? No, approved sources are are not the only source now. You got to keep in mind, the approved source aspect is really the DLA saying we want exact form, fit, and function. And it, it depends on the criticality of the part. So, for example, if it's an aviation part, and let's say the approved source is Boeing. You know, basically, you know, Boeing is really the only company that can make that part because they probably made the, you know, the aircraft that the part goes on. So, it all depends on, you know, like the criticality of the part and what agency is buying it. So to answer your question, uh, there is a little bit of a gray area when it comes to approved source, because when you're bidding on contracts, let's say the approved source has is no longer in business or they no longer manufacture that. You are allowed to uh, uh, present on dibs when you're submitting a response an alternate. And as long as you're able to, um, you know, uh, communicate uh, the, you know, the effectiveness of the alternate that it will match the, you know, the, the same form, fit and function. I always recommend reaching out to the contracting officer before you submit your submit your bid. Reach out to them. Let them know what you're seeing on your end, because chances are the contracting officer, they know this or I should say the contract administrator. They know this information as well. All right. So give them kind of a heads up of what you're going to be presenting. And that might help you out as well. Uh, let's see here. Hopefully that answers the question. The LinkedIn group is not here. OK. All right. And. Uh, what is DLS, TLS? Oh, I think, uh, I think, James, you DLA, TLS. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so DLA, TLS is the Defense Logistics Agency Troop Logistics Support. Oh, okay, so Troop Support. Yeah, so that's that's one of the commands within the DLA. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. Um, they call it a subordinate command. Uh, but yeah, so we do do business with all branches of the DLA, whether it be DLA Aviation, DLA Land and Maritime, DLA Troop Support. Uh, one agency or command in the DLA that we have never won a contract with is DLA Energy. Uh, DLA Energy is very hub zone centric, but again, you got to have, you know, some access to, you know, companies that can produce fuel. And I got some pretty cool things coming out of the pipe and some video, some content that I'm working on to talk a little bit more about DLA Energy along with our journey, because I'm very interested in getting involved with DLA Energy. And uh, it'll be great with my 100 businesses that uh will that i'll be putting on underneath my wing that if we got some businesses in houston that, that are they're working in the oil and gas sector or even here in dallas it will be fantastic to link with you guys to kind of put our heads together and see if we can uh, uh join forces and go after some dla energy kind of uh, type contracts let's see here se uh southeast texas moving services he reads he, he writes i've heard similar experiences from other government contractors who have attempted to work Dallas Apex Accelerator. Not all Apex. <laughs> yes, you're correct, man. It's it, it was a, a hell of an experience this, uh, this week talking to this guy. It was just like, wow, this is the kind of services they're providing. It's like the guy didn't even care. And so, you know, that's that's never good for small businesses that are new. If you're if you're uh, in those cities that and you're forced to talk to those those folks, because believe it or not, I can't go and talk to anyone else. But we do have an office in St. Louis. So I haven't reached out to their Apex Accelerator office there, but I do have a fairly strong relationship with the SBA, with the SBA office in St. Louis. So uh, that's who I actually ended up reaching out to to get my answers um, done there. Okay, cool. The next question comes in from FedCon. We've won a few contracts this year so far. Also started another GovCon company with another name that we will be that will be more focused on. Okay, fantastic to you. Kudos to you. Uh, Fed con there. Um, that's uh, great to, to to expand your horizons and see. We got my friend. Why do you? Why did you open up another? Okay, you guys are just kind of communicating with each other in the chat, which is fantastic. Okay, so we got SC Texas Moving Services again. Hey Kiwi, it's Troop Logistics Support. Oh, okay, so it's not okay. It's not Troop Support. It's the Logistics Support. It's a con contracting vehicle issued by DLA. Currently working on becoming an approved vendor with Noble. Ah, okay. Hey, you know what? That's fantastic. Yeah, Noble, they're 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 killing the game. GSA schedules. I mean, they've been around for years. They're up there with the SAICs of the world. You know, Noble probably does over a hundred million dollars worth of business with the 
uh, with the federal government every year. So if you're able to get in the line with Noble, uh, fantastic uh, company to be able to partner with and offer some uh, logistic services. So uh, kudos to you. Yeah. Um, again, we're not more, we're not on the service side. So yeah, the DLH logistic support, that sounds like trucking, freight, moving things to and fro. Yeah. You know, from uh, trains, planes, automobiles, you name it. Um, that would be great. And you can learn more about them from the, uh, the DLA's contracting services office. The DCSO probably has a lot of information about active contracting vehicles from a service uh, perspective that you can learn more about. I think I do have some videos in my catalog talking about the Defense Contracting Services Office, the DCSO. They're based out of uh, Virginia, out of Port Belvoir. And there's a, a lady that's the director of their office. Her name is Rosita. And um, I do, uh, I send a lot of emails back and forth to Rosita just to find out uh, other ways of getting involved with like DLA Energy and also training programs that they may have, um, um, they, uh, that they may have available as well. Let's see here, another question. Okay, you guys are just kind of going back and forth with each other. Fantastic. Hey, man, I'm really loving that you guys are using the chat and communicating and forging relationships in the chat. All right, now, again, this is the public chat, and I've been talking for 34 minutes, and uh, we're going to be moving over to the um, members-only forum uh, shortly, but there's a couple more things I wanted to talk about as it relates to uh, dibs and back to my presentation. So as we were talking about SAM.gov as a recap, you know, it's more service-based contracts, dibs strictly for product supply contracts, right? Uh, again, you can find both product and service type contracts in SAM for DLA. If you want to just focus myopically on DLA, which I highly recommend for newcomers to GovCon. But if you want to really get some, some wins under your belt really quickly, Dibs is a fantastic platform for newcomers to the GovCon space. The barriers to entry are very low as it relates to being involved with Dibs. You don't need past performance as you would need for some of the larger RFPs. I, I think even small RFPs as it relates to SAM.gov opportunities outside of you know DLA. But you don't need um, past performance you know, in order to win a DLA contract. And DLA will award contracts as low as $50, as high as a million dollars. I mean, I mean, I shouldn't say a million. Um, I know they do IDIQ up to 250. Uh, I have seen uh, larger contract awards through dibs. Um, we won a contract a couple of years ago. Well, not a couple of years, last year. Uh, it was like a, over a $400,000 contract that we won off of a, off of a dibs uh, solicitation that we bid on. I really don't know what the cap is on dibs contracts. If anybody has researched that and knows it off the top of their head, because I know they move the bar around a lot, you know. And so if anyone has researched to find out what's the largest contract that you can get, because years ago, it used to be $150,000 was the highest you know, contract that you can get on dibs. Now they changed it to 250 for IDIQ. And so who knows what the cap is on dibs contracts now. So if anybody has that information, feel free to drop in the chat and share that with other people. And uh, last but not least, you know, uh, the way to be successful, in my opinion, with uh, deal with with dibs is dibs cares about price. Price is important. It's not the only deciding factor to win contracts with dibs, um, but pricing is is pretty important. It's a fairly comp it can be competitive. Um, I get a lot of feedback from student clients saying that hey, you know, it's impossible. How in the world did they award this contract for thirty percent less than what I bid it on? My vendors can't even touch that price. Something's awry here. And you're right. Something is awry. You know, there are a lot of companies that uh, don't, uh, they're not, uh, uh, they're not, um, how should you say, uh, above, above water uh, as it relates to their, their sources of supply. You know, sometimes these companies are buying stuff. You know, I don't know if you guys seen the movie War Dogs. They're buying, they're taking chances and buying things outside of, um, you know, uh, the rules and then, you know, relabeling, repackaging them and getting over to the DLA and taking their chances with it. So some of that, some of that does uh, occur um, with any type of business. So, you know, don't be dismayed or de deterred from continuing to push forward because all that stuff shakes out in the end. A lot of times, guys, when those contracts get awarded for 30 percent less than what you bid, they will sometimes they do, they do get canceled, you know. So keep in mind, just because someone else is beating you at it doesn't necessarily mean that deal is done. All right. So just stay vigilant, stay tracking those national stock numbers, and continue to bid, bid, bid often. 
Another thing that you'll need is your ability to source. Sourcing ability is very, very important as it relates to the DLA. You have to have tools or methodologies to find new vendors in order to support DLA opportunities. And those new vendors can, that they don't always necessarily have to be in the United States. You know I mean, you can find vendors in Denmark, you can find vendors in Norway. And I will have some, uh, some content coming down the pipe pretty soon where I'm going to be talking a little bit about NATO and, um, and how powerful working with uh, uh, NATO countries and finding uh, vendor sources within those countries from a supply perspective can benefit you on your DLA journey because, you know, everything is more expensive in America. And so that may be some opportunities for you guys as well. And I'll be putting together some content for you along the way. And last but not least, in order to be involved with DLA, business relationships are key. Business relationships are paramount. Relationships with DLA, uh, with the DLA contract administrator is imp important. Relationships with your vendor base, relationships within your company. You're going to have to have the ability to put together pretty cool teams that can handle all what it takes to be a DLA vendor. And so, again, Sam.gov versus Dibs. You know, I personally, being the DLA guru, recommend Dibs because I think you can get a bunch of contracts under your belt which will equate to past performance that you can utilize when you go after Sam.gov type contracts and say, hey, look, we have experience working with the DLA at this level, especially when you get into the $100,000 or more type contracts. You know, the, 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 the bigger the contract, the more the risk. And if you're finding um, that you can, can perform at a high level and your SPARS rating is reflecting it, you will be more positioned to do business with Sam.gov. So that's definitely my my two cents as it relates to working Sam.gov versus Dibs. Hopefully, you guys kind of like um, you know my 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 uh, my background, my methodologies, my thoughts as it relates to uh, pursuing both. Again, I'm not really a Sam.gov guy, but uh, there are a lot of opportunities on Sam.gov. Uh, let's see here. James says, "Yeah, from your understanding, uh, it's two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, um, so that maybe that's what the IDIQ kind of does. I, well, I know that from IDIQ, but." you can get larger contracts on, on dibs. I, I just don't know uh, what the cap is. I know it's not 250,000. It's, it's more than that. I, I want to say it's probably a million dollars is probably the cap that you can do on dibs. But, um, I, you know, I'll run that down and see if I can get an answer to that for my next live stream as well. Uh, let's see here. There's another one. How long does it take before you know if you want a contract? I have been on six contracts and all of them show past due right now, but no award notice. You know what? That's that's great, James, that you put that out there. You know, back in the day, I would say pre-pandemic, you know, I would find that the DLA was awarding contracts within, you know, within 30 days, typically. Well, 15 to 30 days. Now we're finding that it's in excess of 45 days, you know, that uh, the DLA is awarding contracts and sometimes you know, they don't award, sometimes they cancel and reissue them. There, there's a lot kind of, you know, there's there's a little bit of a shakeup going on with the DLA. And I think it, it had a lot to do because of the pandemic. But as you guys know, as effective January 1st this year, the DLA is now back in the office. They are working, um, I think, uh, I believe Mondays and Fridays, they're teleworking. But Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays, they have butts in seats in the actual brick and mortar DLA offices. And we're going to probably see a change. Maybe if not this quarter, I know second quarter of this year, I'm hoping that we're going to see the DLA kind of kicking out more contracts. Uh, keep in mind, this is an election year, too. So the federal government just across the board is a little more skittish in awarding contracts the way that they the way they do because of the new administration coming in and they're trying to figure out what the budgets and things are going to be looking like. So keep in mind that this is a election year as well. But during the calm before the storm comes, I recommend you you continue to bid, get comfortable with bidding, get comfortable with building your team, get comfortable with just positioning yourself because believe you me, it's coming. And for those companies that have an understanding and are able to take on the risk and have, you know, have access to the capital, have your, you know, your your lines of credit in line with your vendor base and you're doing business with people that know, like, and trust you, you're going to be positioned in order to profit uh, substantially in doing business with the DLA as they get back on track. So uh, hopefully that helps with, with that um, questionnaire. And last but not least, okay. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, looks like SC Texas is talking with, um, with James there as well. Okay, cool guys. So it looks like, 
We got some uh, great activity in the chat today, and I'm really appreciating you guys for communicating and and um, and sharing some thoughts there. Uh, let's see. I want to figure this out now. I have to put in my StreamYard link. Okay, great. So I think the StreamYard link is there. I'm going to hide that. All right. And then, so what we're going to do next, guys, um, we're going to go into the community forum here. And where I'm going to put the, the link in order for you guys to access me um, for the Brigadier General level. Because I don't know exactly all who's Brigadier General. But uh, we're going to basically, I'm going to put this in the community forum. For those of you who are Brigadier General level or higher, and I guess the highest actually. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We're going to change this. Dun, dun, dun. Every time I do this, it seems like it always moves around here. But uh, yeah, we're going to be moving over to the Brigadier General level only, members only. And this is going to be for Brigadier General higher. And that's going to be done there. And um, we're going to be switching over. So uh, Brigadier General level members, who, if you're watching the content right now, if you go to the community forum page uh, for my YouTube channel, so go to the home page, go to the community forum, and I'm going to drop the StreamYard link in the community forum um, uh, chat there, and you'll be able to click on that link. And uh, one second here, let me do that, that, that. Looks like I got everything set correctly. Yeah, it's a lot of, you know, I'm building Wi-Fi, guys. I'm building Wi-Fi, so just bear with me as I uh, push a couple of buttons here. I want to make sure I do this correctly. Uh, let's see here. Go to YouTube there. And I am going to put a post in the community forum right now and again you have to upgrade your account if you guys are commander level you want to have you got some deeper questions and you want to ask uh feel free to upgrade your account or your registration i should say to uh the brigadier general and you guys can meet me over in that space so brigadier general hire i just put a post in the community forum with the Streamyard link so again go to my home page of the YouTube channel, you'll see the community forum tab. Click on that, and you should see the StreamYard link. That's only for Brigadier General only, uh, Brigadier General member eyes only. And you can click on that link there, and that'll bring you over to StreamYard. And so I'm now going to switch all the video content over to Brigadier General or higher. I'll see you guys over in StreamYard shortly, and be prepared with all of your DLA questions. And we'll have two hours to kind of hash it out. All right, so. Thanks again for joining me today, guys. Thanks again for all of your subscriptions and your likes and the activity. Man, this is the most activity I've seen in my chat, you know, to date. So fantastic. I'm glad you guys are getting a lot of that. And again, if you're interested in meeting me over on LinkedIn, uh, send me an email at thefed.contracting. I'll be sure to get the LinkedIn group uh, link over to you. And then, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at it and see if, I, if you guys qualify to be uh, part of our LinkedIn group as well. Okay, so I'll see you in five. Four, three, two, and one. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is that I launched an um, interactive advanced DLA vendor workshop. You know, I've been getting a lot of folks that say, hey, you know, I like master classes, but I really don't like, you know, working uh, or learning. That's not my learning style to sit back and just watch a pre recorded video. You know, I'd like to do more information. I like to learn the information by way of virtual workshops, you know, like, let's say you literally like to talk face to face or, you know, like you learn by direct interaction, you know, like dynamic interactions, uh, instead of being asynchronous, it'll be synchronous, you know, like we are there. So I launched a, uh, again, let me bring this back on the screen. Uh, wait a minute, do this this way. I launched an interactive advanced DLA vendor workshop. It's a three-day workshop. And um, I have this workshop available right now. Uh, my plan is to have no more than three folks sitting in the workshop because I think we have more than three. We just really can't, 
it's hard to get through. It, it's it's so taxing to have too many people, especially in a dynamic virtual setting. So I want to have a minimum of two folks, two two uh, two business uh, people that come in to these three day workshop, and each day they're going to be three consecutive days, and it's going to be. I think my first workshop is going to be on January the fifteenth through January 18th. So we got a little over nine days or so before the workshop launches. I think right now I haven't had anyone register for the workshop. So it's out there and it's available. So if it fits your schedule and you're interested in doing a more virtual training versus the pre-recorded training, I do offer an interactive DLA, uh, advanced DLA vendor workshop. And that's available for you guys to get involved. And again, I'm only going to allow a minimum of two, maximum of three folks. So like basically if I get two folks that sign up for the workshop, I more than likely will shut the door and it'll just be those two companies that will be able to sit with me over a three consecutive day, four hours a day. And I believe it's going to be from 10 to two, I think, uh, or 10, yeah, is it four out 10, 11, 12, one, two. Yeah, 10 to two uh, on Monday, 10 to two on Tuesday, 10 to two on Wednesday. And I have uh, the agenda already written out for you guys, um, and I'll, I'll show you how you can get learn more about that. You know, I was talking about my master classes that I have out there, and I hate to just always talk master classes, but I know you're going to need this type of training in order to hit the ground running so that you don't, you, you don't skin your knee, you know? So this is why I put so much energy into this. Again, I have my flagship, my flagship, eight step. To successful federal supply contract business missions to the DLA. This is considered my pre-award masterclass. It's really for new businesses that are new to federal contracting, new to the DLA. Shows you exactly how to get registered with the DLA, how to get you know your profile set up. You know, it shows you some tools that you can employ uh, and methodologies that you can use in, in in going after business with the DLA. It's a fantastic masterclass. It's my largest selling masterclass right now because there's a lot of new folks that are coming to the federal contract in Rena. Uh, I think I actually reduced or put some discounts uh, or some uh, coupons that are out there, I should say, uh, for this particular masterclass. So it's not as, um, you know, um, I guess, painful for new businesses to get involved where you don't really know if you really can, you know, got what it takes to get involved. But again, you know, the master classes that are out there are really for folks that are confident. You know, it's not, you don't want to half ass it. You don't want to say, yeah, I'm not so sure. So I'm only going to do bare minimum. No, you got to do the bare maximum in order to really go after this. You know, these are $7.5 million contracts, $66 million contracts. These types of contracts require folks that say, hey, I got the stuff. I just need the information. And so here's the information for you. I also launched my post-award masterclass, meaning if you get a DLA contract and you don't know exactly how to perform, how to interpret all that information, how to package, label, how to effectively ship and invoice. So, you know, to close the loop on getting the award, I launched my post-award masterclass, which is the four steps to general post-award process to successfully complete supply contracts with DLA. Again, these two masterclasses are pre-recorded. So that means you'll sit in if you can, if that's a great learning style for you, fantastic. But for those of you who don't have that type of learning style, I have a fourth masterclass that I launched about a week ago, and I'll talk about that in a second. But my third masterclass that I recommend for those of you that really are serious about getting into the manufacturing aspects, custom manufacturing, whether it be, you know, making custom clothing that may be export controlled because there may be certain types of materials like uh, fire retardant, you know, uh, 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 textiles or something like that. I've never run across those type of uh, those type of tech uh, data packages, but they may be out there. You know, it's the U.S. military. Who knows? They got a lot of top secret stuff floating around. But you'll need to have access. If you need to have access to those types of drawings, you'll need to be EJCP certified, which stands for a Hands Joint Certification Program. All right, and that's a that's a program that's put together for manufacturers and distributors in Canada and the United States, and you have to go through. The U.S. Navy by way of the DLA in order to get EJC, EJCP certified. It's a very convoluted process. And so I launched a master class that allows you to have a four-step process to get EJCP certified if you follow my steps within 14 days tops. All right. So our company is EJCP certified. And what that does, it allows you to, if you have access to C folders on dibs, 
when you go into C folders and when you click that little button that says tech, do tech documents, if you ever click it and it's not, and there are no tech doc documents available, that means you're, that you need to be EJCP certified in order for those tech documents to be available for you to download. But anyway, it's a great masterclass that'll help you to understand exactly how to get EJCP certified without spending a lot of time trying to figure that out. And last but not least, the masterclass of all masterclasses, my three-day training. I consider it, I call it my interactive advanced DLA vendor workshop. This particular workshop, again, is basically a culmination of masterclasses one, two, and three. That is my pre-award, post-award, and well, actually, I shouldn't say EJCP because we don't really get into the EJCP aspects of this uh, for this workshop agenda, but it's really going to get into the methodologies. How do you price components? How do you do the competitor analysis, you know, uh, up front? And then how do you put together a bidding strategy? It's going to, we're going to be talking a lot about your company and what you guys, what you may be interested in getting involved with based on your know-how and your knowledge base. All right. So you're going to have to come with some prerequisites. And so, again, I'll put the link in the description below as well as put it in the chat. I'll, put, I'll do that now for those of you that might want to kind of take a look at what the master classes are looking like. And um, when you go over to this uh, master class link, take a look at that, um, that, especially if that's your learning style where you like to learn virtually, like real time. You know, you like to do more of a synchronous type of like micing up, cameraing up. We're going to be doing this on Zoom. We're going to have four hour uh, trainings, you know, that are, you know, not just open, like what are your questions, but it's going to be a very structured training where it allows you to have pre prerequisites that that is some solicitations that you're interested in. We're going to do a deep dive into understanding those solicitations, understanding more about your business in a classroom setting that's going to be metered. Again, imagine two to three businesses where not only are you guys coming in and talking, uh, you know, we're interacting, but you're networking at the same time. You're beginning to establish relationships. And, you know, like from a very ground floor level, it's the vision that I have with these workshops. And then, you know, so that'd be like day one. Day two, we would talk about contracts that you've actually awarded. So I really prefer folks that want to get involved with the three-day workshops to not just be green behind the ears. I think it'll be great if you have solicitations that you have in place. You also have some awards that you've that you've won and you're just interested in and just not making mistakes. So basically think pre-award, post-award, all together in one. And then day three, we're going to really dive into vendor development. That is how to build your internal team and external teams to, go, to, to uh, further position your company on being successful with the DLA by the methodologies that we employ, you know, best, uh, you know, I, I would say proven best practices as it relates to just the foundation of how to get started versus you just being out there and willy nilly it and, you know, trying to, you know, build the plane while you're flying it and things like that, where you can run the risk of making some major mistakes that may block you out of the blessings that the DLA has for you just kind of got to know that anyway so i put together those workshops that hopefully will help you um along your dla journey and also to help to increase uh you know your neck your networking opportunities again i just put the link in the chat below if you want to find out more about these master classes to get involved thanks again for watching and for tuning in to this exciting announcement i'm parker winslow signing out